Rivelle Road. I'm Alexandra and today I am filming my part two of all the things I've made. So in part one I showed you all the things that I made uh, during my high school years and then going to university and college. Uh, so if you want to watch that I will leave a card or a link in the description below. And then part two I am showing you all the things I've made uh, since starting Ruby Vale Road. So some of these you might see, might have seen in some of my sewing tutorials and then other things um, I try to showcase a little bit on Instagram. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, it's at Ruby Vale Road. Again, I just hope this video serves as a little bit of entertainment uh, and maybe inspires you for some things that you'd like to make. Uh, if there's anything that you see in here and you think, oh, I'd love to learn how to make that, leave a comment down below and I will hopefully get in touch and see if it is something that I can make into a tutorial for the future. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to Ruby Vale Road and like this video if you enjoy it. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Alright, so kicking it off, I have a little outfit to show you. This is, um, this is all made with remnant fabric. So they're actually really, really affordable. And I was on my way to an engineering ball down in Brisbane. And this was like when I was first starting Ruby Vale Road. I'd made a little outfit to wear to the ball. So the first one was uh, this little silk satin kemi top that I made. It's not made well at all. It's made really badly. But it did work and it served its purpose so that's okay. Um, but yeah it was like a little kemi top and then over the top I had cut just like a circle so it was like a little flare and this sat over on my shoulders like a little uh, tri strap or bicep strap whichever one it called, and then it just had little shoestring straps up here, but I didn't cut these on the bias, so they are quite thick, in fact, yeah, they are hand stitched, all of this, all the hem around here was hand stitched, and all this hem was hand stitched as well, this was long before I knew how to roll and roll. I, this is something that I would actually really love to remake, uh, another piece of beautiful silk satin, um, and do a nice fine hem, and probably make it a little bit longer just so I can wear it with more things. But it was this length because I wore it with this skirt, which sat nice and high up on my waist. And this is a beautiful, really deep navy silk jupion. Um, and then on the waistband is this pink, um, which sort of matched with similar to this little cami top. So that was the waistband that I did. Uh, I didn't have very much fabric because, like I said, I bought this fabric as a remnant. So I sort of just may do and put a few little pleats through the front and then a few little pleats at the back but I really like how I did them and they came out very neat and crisp because at the back was a box pleat and at the front um, it was like an inverted pleat so I think they sat really beautifully. The length it only came I think maybe just below or maybe just above my ankle like a couple of inches above my ankle which again it's a university ball so I do prefer the length a little bit shorter, not all the way to the floor because you do really want to be comfortable and dance, a lot of dancing. And then it has a beautiful perfect invisible zipper there on the side, very proud of that one. So that was my first little outfit and this was like launching into Rivelle Road. Uh, so those three weeks that I spent down in Brisbane I bought a lot of fabric. Uh, first being I went to Alavoda and I found this absolutely amazing um, Italian linen and it is just so beautiful. It's such good quality and the print and the colours are gorgeous. And then this is what I made for my brother's engagement party which we had here at our house, at home. Uh, so when I got back from my trip to Brisbane I made the dress for the engagement party and I videoed it and it is my very first video on YouTube. Um, it's a bit long-winded and it's just literally me making the dress. There's no instructions or anything like that. But yeah, again, I used the same pattern that I'd made for my hot pink silk ball dress uh, and then just reshaped the neckline. I did a straight neckline on this one and I did very nice thick uh, straps and they came into like a, a V at the back of the dress. This is one of my all-time favourite dresses that I have ever made. Um, it just sits at a beautiful length and it can be worn with a pair of heels and look really gorgeous or it can be just worn casual on a hot summer's day too so really love that dress. So then we move on to and this time I used an actual pattern so this is a vintage pattern that um, my mum had and let me tell you this had to be resized so much I don't know vintage patterns like women must just have been such a completely different shape to what we are now because the waist was this 
this is how small the waist was on the pattern. This is like so tight to wear. I love it because it really sucks you in, but it is very tight. Like you can't eat in this dress. Um, as for the bust, the bust was so humongous that I had to like bring it in and bring it in and bring it in. I think I ended up bringing it like, I don't know, like five centimeters each side. Like I think I brought this dress in 10 centimeters, which is probably only two sizes. But anyway, it felt like a lot when I was making it. Uh, this dress was easy. It doesn't have any lining or anything. It was just a little facing. Um, and I made out of a really lovely denim chambray. I just really wanted the denim chambray dress and a lot of them were like shirt makers and things. So I did something a bit, um, so I did something a bit more in my style with little straps and a beautiful gathered skirt. This has a side zipper. Um, I don't really like side zippers. I just find they're really hard to put on when you're by yourself. Like a back zipper, I can stretch around the back and put it on no problems. A side zipper, trying to stretch it over your body and reach around, I don't, it's not, I don't find that quite that easy. <laughs> anyway, that's my only little criticism. But that's probably also because this dress is very, very fitted. But I still wear this dress, still love it. It is a little bit on the shorter length, um, but I think it's really fun and it's a great go-to dress. So next dress is this beautiful black polished cotton dress. Uh, again, this was the pattern that I'd made for the hot pink dress, just um, adjusted to do now a little v-neck. And I didn't do shoestring straps. So again, another another lovely gathered skirt on the dress. This is where my favourite. This is very fitted. This dress it really brings you in for the waist, which I love. It is a little bit gapy again through the armhole. Probably needed to ease that in. But this is a dress that I really really love. And this is the dress that I used for making the tutorial on how to add pockets. So this had the contrasting pockets in here. Uh, but I really love this little dress and it's so much fun to wear. And this was my first little black dress. I'd never bought one and I'd never made one until this one came along. I always find black fabric very difficult to buy. Um, like just getting something that is a really nice quality. Um, but finally I found this and it was a black polished cotton and it was perfect and I loved it. Again, back in my usual fashion, I hand stitched my hem of my dress. Um, I think sometimes you can sort of tell with some things like the denim chambray dress. I just did a top stitch on that hem because it's a casual dress. The dresses that are a little bit more formal and um, special, I think a hand sew on hem is really nice. So continuing on with those contrast pockets, it was the fabric from this little skirt, which is also a polished cotton, which is beautiful. This is my, from my How to Sew a Gathered Skirt tutorial, so it was another another gathered skirt for me, uh, but the wanted to make the tutorial for everyone to see how I make them. Uh, but I love this skirt as well. I love it. I love the bright colours. It's just really fun, perfect for summer. And it's got a little bit of black in through the pattern, which is great, so I can just pair it with a black t-shirt. Um, or black singlet when it's really hot and feel really easy and great. And another gathered skirt, I made this gathered skirt. This is huge, but I love this fabric. Again, it's like another polished cotton, uh, but it's got this really fun print on it and I called this like the Greek skirt, just because it, is it not like Mykonos? Unfortunately now this skirt is a bit too big for me, like it's just sitting at the wrong part of my body, um, like on the wrong waist at the wrong waistline and so it looks a bit dowdy but I think it's really if I could take it in or otherwise I might just give it away um because it is a lot of fabric and it's a mini skirt so it can feel quite swamping especially that it's not sitting at my most flattering point on my waist so yeah but it is a really cool skirt another little thing from one of my sewing tutorials on YouTube was an off the shoulder top this fabric again was a remnant it's a silk jupion with black shot through it and I do love this little top. I think it's really cute. It's just got really fun little sleeves, lots of gathers, very short, so I have to wear it with like high-waisted things. Because it was a remnant, that's what dictated the length of it, uh, so that is why it's quite short. But yeah, it's a fun little cropped off the shoulder top. Very fun, very easy. So then in early 2017, I moved to Brisbane and I found myself ending up with a job in the sewing industry, which was so exciting and I wasn't really expecting that. I was just sort of like looking for jobs um, just in retail and whatnot. I knew I wanted to be working in fashion, of course, and I knew I wanted to be working with clothes, but to end up in sewing, which is what I wanted, was beyond and just so exciting. So the day before my first official day of work, I decided that I needed to make a new skirt. Didn't want to turn up in all my brightly coloured gathered skirts. I thought I needed something a little bit more, a little bit smarter, without being too, you know, office. Uh, so 
I had this khaki linen. Unfortunately, this fabric is just, it's a linen, but it's just not the best quality linen. So the skirt hasn't really worn so well. It's just gone quite raggy, which is a real shame. But with it, I did make a little wrap skirt to wear to work. So it's just a little, I just used my straight skirt pattern um, and just adjusted it to make it though. So it has the piece underneath and then the piece over the top. So it's a wrap skirt, cut it on a bit of an angle so you could see that it was a wrap skirt more clearly and then I put here the four ties so it makes um, four little, oh, sorry, I can't count. So, so I put the four ties so that it makes two little bows here on the sides when it's done up. And this one I used all bias binding because uh, I didn't want to put a lining in it so I just used bias binding to face the um, to face the waistband and then a little bias binding as well to hem it which is all hand stitched around there and all hand stitched around here and then here I also hand stitched it I don't know why I did that it would be probably better with just a top stitch I think it was because I didn't have exactly the right thread color it was my green was a little bit too pale but yeah love that little skirt wore it a lot again just with the black t-shirt black singlet it was really cool really easy and I do think that I found a happy medium between like smart casual not working in an office but still looking like half decent for work <laughs> almost decent for work I hope <laughs> So in 2017, unfortunately, I didn't really get very much sewing done, uh, which is a big change for me because I was working um, full-time in sewing. When you came home from work, you didn't really feel like sewing anymore. Uh, so unfortunately, I wasn't so great at organising myself, which meant that when I did want to make something, like for a special event, I left everything, like the weekend before, the night before. So my next projects were mostly made in a very big rush. And I wouldn't recommend that because sewing should be enjoyed and things that you are making you want to put a lot of time and love into it because then you are really going to love it um, forever. And I will show you this because <laughs> this is very sad. So this is the dress that I made to wear to my brother's wedding and I had all year like I bought this fabric which was like a silk crepe sheen and I was like oh yeah I'm gonna make this and then everyone just went that is disgusting fabric do not use it. So I went into Gardam's Fabrics in Brisbane and thank god they had this beautiful fabric and I bought it and I love it it's just so me hot pink a little bit of multicolored and going to a wedding like what color do you wear to a wedding so I wasn't really sure what style to make either I like I just didn't want to do like my typical shoestring strap sort of thing um, but one shoulder was very big in at that time and so I decided to go with one shoulder dress sad thing is though I drafted this pattern and I didn't put any darts in it or any sort of like um, give so it really just pancakes me out at the top and the other sad thing is I put like a hot pink stripe next to a hot pink stripe and it should have been a hot pink with a white or a cream sorry um or otherwise I should have put a belt around the waist because I just think that this looks really funny and I think it makes me look quite wide but to return what I was talking previously about putting time and effort into the clothes you make yes this is why because my zipper busted on this dress when I went to wear it um again in like like last year so that was really sad but if I think I hadn't sewn it properly in the first time and it unfortunately just caught and broke so that was a real shame but anyway this dress I did put a lining in through the bodice and through the skirt so that was really good um, and yeah and I did love the length on this dress for a minute there it was like looking very very dowdy and I wasn't sure if I should wear it to the wedding or get a new dress or go and buy a dress but I'm very happy that I stuck through with it because it was really bright and fun. Alright so then again didn't get much sewing done but I had booked a weekend to Melbourne for myself going down to see the Dior exhibition so I was really excited and of course wanted to make some clothes to wear uh, so my boss had given me this really funky fabric uh, and so I just made like a little straight mini skirt, very 60s, uh, darts at the front, darts at the back. Really bad job of finishing the zipper there. All I did was like just roll over, roll and roll over the waistband. Um, so it was pretty, pretty dodgy. Again, I think I was making this like the night before I was leaving. Cutting all of the corners to just have something new to wear. And then I paired it with this little black silk top which is another A Pair and a Spare Tutorials, um, which is Collective Gen now, so I'll link this be below because these are really gorgeous and very easy to wear, um, very easy to make, again, because it's just a rectangle with little shoestring straps, uh, and I do really 
love this little top. I used like a black silk lining fabric though, so I probably wouldn't recommend that because it is very thin. So I'd love to make a couple more. Um, and the other thing is I think I also put the straps too far out so they fall down. I probably need to move the straps in just so they don't fall down so much. Uh, yeah, but they're really cool, really easy to wear and look very smart, I think, for this in this little skirt. Also, wore well, this to my Christmas party that year. Um, yeah, probably. Not sure if that was such a great idea. Anyway. So also to take to Melbourne, uh, going to the Dior exhibition, of course, I wanted to make a very special little outfit. Uh, and I had bought in 2016 this incredibly beautiful, I think it was a Tory Burch uh, dead stock fabric, and it is like silk organza. Um, I'm not sure, it must just be printed on, but with little flowers all over it, and it's just gorgeous. So I bought that from the fabric store. Uh, and this was the perfect time to make a little gathered skirt and I just put a lovely blue cotton foil lining underneath it which went really well with it uh, and I paired it with a little cardigan from Alana Hill which had beautiful diamante buttons down the front and my navy suede uh, pointed heels and I wore that to the Dior exhibition which was just incredible and there were so many lovely little ladies um, to little ladies who came up to me and were very impressed. I'm not sure if they, I didn't know if they knew that I'd made my skirt, but they just thought, they were like, oh, your outfit fits right in sort of thing, which was very exciting. Very, very, very sweet. Very lovely little compliment to get, um, especially when I'd made it myself for that occasion. Yes, so again, another beautiful skirt. This paired with a white t-shirt, just casually for summer and sneakers, I think is really cool. Uh, do love it with a little glitzy top or something though, if you want to dress it up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, again, it sits at a really beautiful length uh, and it's a beautiful fabric. So that's the thing. When you use a beautiful fabric, it's always, like what you make is always just going to be beautiful. Even if it is just a gathered skirt or just a little straight skirt or something easy and simple, the great thing about simple styles is that you can pair them back with the essentials that you already have in your wardrobe, you know, so you can already pair them back with a white t-shirt or a black singlet and you can pair them back and it's just really easy and you can wear your sneakers or you can wear your really lovely shoes um, and so I do recommend always investing in really good quality fabrics for the things that you make. And then the next item I'm sharing with you is probably one of my favourite things I've ever made. And it's so sad because, again, this is one of those things I made in such a rush and did not put any effort into it, was, like, sewing this, finishing this, like, half an hour before I was leaving the house in a taxi to go to a friend's 21st, because I just am quite hopeless. But I had bought this beautiful black um, crepe fabric, 100% silk. It sort of got a little bit of stretch to it, too, which is really cool. And I'd been invited to a black and gold 21st and I was like I need to just wear something that is very me uh, because there's gonna be a lot of people there that I don't actually know and so I just need to feel um, just like I can blend in to the back in my black dress so this was my go-to so I used the pattern that I uh, made the hot pink dress out of but I didn't make any changes to it I just used it as it was uh, and then I made little shoestring straps and but this time my change that I made was that I put a full circle skirt on it. So I've never, never done a circle skirt before. Uh, don't look at the hem, it is horrendous because I just I didn't know how to sew a circle at all. Anyway, and then I put the lining and I put the black silk lining, but the black silk lining didn't have any stretch, so it doesn't sit quite as well. I probably should have used the same outer fabric as for the lining. Uh, and my zipper doesn't sit very well either, it's quite bubbled. But as a dress on, it is beautiful and it feels amazing. I want to swear about how good it feels on because it is just again a beautiful fabric so on the skin it feels amazing and a circle skirt with it goes whoosh is just so cool. Really love that. So really love this dress. Uh, one of my favorites and it will probably be a dress that I will remake um, if I can get my hands on black silk crepe again. This will be a dress that I'd love to remake properly really well finished and I can have in my wardrobe for many many years because it is stunning. And then the last dress that I made in 2017 was for my work Christmas party. I made it the night before the work Christmas party. I'd been having meltdowns like all week that I had nothing to wear and uh, in typical Alexandra fashion. I am a Leo though so that's like freaking 
at our like character DNA. <laughs> Not to use that as an excuse. But my boss gave me this beautiful, absolutely amazing beaded fabric. Can you see that? Can you see that beaded? It is so cool. Uh, so the night before, I had a couple of glasses of red wine. Okay, I'll give you another tip here. Do not think that red wine or beer or any sort of alcohol is going to help when it comes to sewing. I'm always like, get those creative juices flowing. And the next minute you're holding like your sewing scissors in your hand and you're like, wow, these are really deadly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your hand's just like shaking. Anyway, so I would not recommend drinking and sewing because I've tried it so many times and it's just stupid. It's just stupid. It's just a waste of time. It doesn't make you any better at sewing. It just slows you down. And you get like a couple of hours in and you're like, oh, I'm really tired. It's time to go to bed now. And that, that's all it does to me. So. so, I made this dress. All I did was take my hot pink silk uh, pattern. I always refer to it as the hot pink silk pattern. I'm sorry. Um, and all I did was didn't do any darts, just used it for the neckline and the armhole to draft that. And then I took my straight skirt pattern and added it to the rest of it, just flared it out from the hip though so it had a little bit more movement uh, and then I made a lining in exactly the same fashion but I made it out of the silk uh, stretch crepe that I had left over which was good because it was the lining and it had a little bit of stretch so it um, sat nicely, really nicely on the body. As for the beaded fabric, I wanted it to have um, a fair bit of drape so it is a bit more oversized which then I could put a belt around it and it sort of um, just drapes a little bit there, a little bit blousy over. Um, in the bodice. Uh, for the length, I didn't take the lining all the way down to the hem. I left that gap. I'm not sure if I do like that. Uh, I think it was okay. Um, for the hem, I, I kept it below my knee. I wanted the dress to be quite formal. Uh, for no particular reason, but I just think it was nice as an evening dress. You know what I mean? Like I could wear it to a cocktail party in the future and things like that. Will there ever be cocktail parties again though? Like, seriously? Anyway, uh, and then for the straps I just used like this black um, cording, which is just really easy. I persevered with this on my domestic machine though. I don't even think I had a hammer to smash beads. I think I was just using like whatever heavy object I had to try and smash the beads. My carpet was covered in glass beads for months, uh, but that was fine. It's fine. Uh, and then finally I gave up that night and I took it into work the next morning to finish it off. And using an industrial machine on beaded fabric, it just like went straight through, so easy, all finished, had a dress to wear, and I'd done that in a night and a morning. So pretty happy with that little number. So now moving into 2018, uh, again, I didn't really get much time to sew. When I was at work, I was really bad. I just did not dedicate any time in my free time to sew and it made me really sad and upset because obviously sewing is what I love um, and when I'm not and like I love creating things for myself because I'm a little selfish uh, but it's just what I love doing so anyway I did get a few things made though so I did make this beautiful this is a uh, Liberty cotton lawn and I made again I just loved that black um, dress that I made so I wanted to recreate it just so I had one for every day uh, so it's the same little bodice and a full circle skirt again this probably really needs a lining in this skirt because it does blow up in the wind during the day and um, quite embarrassing but it's alright who doesn't love a Marilyn Monroe moment like it's iconic for a reason you know I love it uh, with the back here the only thing is the straps do fall off and I think Mum made a very good point that this point here probably needs to come over just a little bit. But yes, I do really love this dress. And the nice thing with the circle skirt is that you can have the hemline uh, a bit longer. So you can have this sort of sitting on the knee. Um, and it doesn't feel like you're swamped in it because it just swishes around so gorgeously. So yeah, really, really love these style of dresses. And I made this one just really well as well. I think so that makes me really proud of it. You know, like the lining is also neatly placed in. Oh, so the lining is also neatly stitched in. And the hem is much more perfect than the black. And it's really nice and fine. So, yeah, I just love it when dresses are really well made. And you've made them and it's like, yes, I can wear this and feel great in it. You know, that's the whole point. I made this skirt. Oh my god, I love this skirt. So this was a beautiful silk cotton fabric I had bought at the fabric store uh, down in Brisbane and originally I had thought of making like a button up blouse. 
I still have never made a button up blouse. One day I really hope to, and I'd have to collars and everything and cuff and plackets on your sleeves and all that sort of thing. But instead I decided to make a little shirt skirt. These are again a very popular little style. Um, this is really actually very easy to make. I just figured it out, like just measured myself, um, worked out how, much, how wide I needed to cut it to allow for the elastic. Uh, added little ruffles onto it, just put elastic at the top of this ruffle to attach it so it's nice and stretchy and moves over my body. A uh, little fine roll and roll hem, and a little bit of elastic here in the waistband so it sits nice and close to the body. Uh, you could leave the elastic out so it's a little ruffle if you like, but I like it like this. Um, again, just with a nice, I prefer it with like a loose black singlet, I think looks really cool. Love this little skirt, it's just beautiful fabric again, in a very simple style, but it's really fun and very cute. I think with little styles it already makes it fun so it needed a little style which also spoke fun. <laughs> this is silk satin and I decided to just make it into a little knife pleated skirt. It's really cute. Um, it's got a beautiful waistband on it. Look what happens when you put um, stabilizer on a waistband. Look how beautiful it sits. It's gorgeous. Would I ever knife pleat silk satin again? Probably not. It's a bloody nightmare and as you can see it's just always crushed and it's very difficult to have this um, the to iron all the pleats in all the time. But again, this is a pretty little skirt. You can wear it with a little pair of black heels, a little black top, you can wear it with a little glitzy top, um, and I think it's really fun. It's quite bright, so if you're looking for the attention, go with the bright. But if not, um, yeah, maybe maybe pick a maybe pick just a more uh, boring colour, really. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, so also in 2018 I made this little top. Um, I really love this little top. It was just one of those days I wanted something that um, was a surefire to work out. You know, I just felt like making something, really switching off from the world, and this is what I came up with. It is a beautiful little black... Oh, sorry, I've got it inside out. Uh, yeah, so it's a beautiful little uh, sheer black cotton, and it's got a really cute little purple locked uh, polka dot all over it which is really sweet and so I just did this in an off-the-shoulder style um, with a little sleeve with, so it's got an elastic um, elastic cuff here and you can sort of push the sleeve up to give it a bit more zhuzh, zhuzh. Uh, it is very short again but I like tucking it into high-waisted things and it sort of blouses over otherwise wearing it with just high-waisted pants um, and just put a black bra underneath it and I think it looks really cool yeah again very easy to make very easy to wear so then I moved on to a little bit more of a complicated project, not that complicated, but um, it doesn't have shoestring straps, so big difference for me. This is made from the beautiful caper linen from the fabric store. It's, it was a pattern that my boss drafted for one of our customers, uh, and then I took the 12 that he had made and then had to be readjusted a little bit for me. I'm not quite so broad up the top, so I had to bring, in, uh, bring it in a little bit up here. I really love it because it can be worn in summer, it can be worn in winter with tights and boots and a beautiful cardigan and yeah it can be worn all times of the year I think because of the colour and because of the fabric and then it's just got beautiful pleats, I just did pleats around there, I did it flat at the front and then the pleats following all the way around to the back. This is the green linen dress, I've written about it on my blog and how green linen or green dresses in general really started finding their way into our wardrobe in the last few, um, last few years, whether that be our Pinterest wardrobe or our real life wardrobe. And I think it was something that took people by surprise because green wasn't really a colour that people were really wearing. I think it's taken a long time for them to start finding the green dyes that work really well and this is certainly one of those colours that works really well. I think it's beautiful. Um, and those deep greens can just look amazing. So the thing that I really realised in like 2017, 2018 and 2019 when I wasn't sewing as much as I had hoped or I wasn't like, I was in, when I was at uni and college I seemed to have made so many things uh, and I really slowed down the number of things I made in those last, in the last three years uh, is that I really made things that I love. And I think that's what is important. And we've had Fashion Revolution um, Week this week, and it's about like you know who made your clothes and love your clothes, and they last longer. And that goes for the people who make their own clothes. You know, when you put the time into making your clothes and choosing really good quality fabrics, you will make something that you love and something that you will wear all the time and something that will last. Because these are garments 
that I love and so I want to have them for years and I want to be able to wear them and and so I used to you know be a bit annoyed with myself I didn't make anything this year like I only made five projects and they made ten projects and it's like well when I look back at those things that I made how much do I love them I really really love them and so I hate to be a cliche but quality over quantity is so important so you don't need to be pushing yourself constantly like I need to make something new I need to make a new thing every single month or um, you know like it's so important that I'm sewing all of the time because that is my hobby take the time to think about the fabrics that you have and think about the fabrics that you want to bring into your collection um, and not so much just stashing them all up uh, and having ideas of what you really need and the gaps in your wardrobe or making things that you know that you're going to really love um, I know for me when it comes to sewing I find myself like always wanting to make something when I have a special occasion and like that's usually my inspiration I'll be like oh, I've got to go to a wedding I need to make a dress to go to a wedding and I do love that uh, and it's hard because I do love sewing and so you know I'll find myself making a new dress just for the sake of it because I want to make something new I guess now I just like to contemplate and think about what it is that I'm making and think about all of the little things that I want to include so making sure that now if I love I love pockets on dresses so making sure I make a few good dresses that have pockets um, you know having that variety of having sleeves on dresses because that's something I've never done and now it's something I really want to get into just to bring into my wardrobe some new things and I know then I've got that variety and I will change it up a bit and I know that then I will be relying on my me made wardrobe a lot more instead of constantly looking in shops and constantly looking at what fashion is trying to sell us and I'll be like no I can make that or oh, I've already got something like that and I know that I am very confident in what I have to wear because it was made by me for me and that leads us on to my next dress which is this beautiful dress which I wrote a blog post on and in the blog post I wrote that the bringing your visions to life is making a personal statement um, so this is a beautiful striped linen I bought from the fabric store I had had it in my stash for so many years I had a completely different idea of what I was going to make uh, when I had bought it and then eventually it was like, you know what, I have that fabric, I just need to make it into a dress. And I need to make it into a dress that I know I'm going to love and wear. And so this is again made um, from the same pattern that the denim chambray dress was made. Because that is a dress that I knew that I loved to wear and it was a shape that I found very flattering on me. Uh, so I made it again in this striped linen uh, and I just love it. And this time I did long tie straps that just tie up right there on the shoulders. Um, and I didn't make this one so tight, I left a little bit more room in it, just so it's a bit more comfortable to wear. Originally I had the hem quite a bit longer, but I decided to take it up, which, honestly, best idea ever. I just feel so much more at ease with it, a little bit shorter, I just think it is just, um, I think it just is more flattering for me, because I am quite short. I did want a longer dress when I first made this, and it was great, because it, when I wore it to work, I was on my knees a lot, pinning hems and things, so, um, that did serve its purpose then, but now I don't have to do that, so I think a little bit shorter length is great. And then another piece that I really, really love is this 100% silk gathered skirt. Again, I think this was a dead stock from Rachel Gilbert, which is a, who's an Australian designer, um, that I found at the fabric store. It's just such a beautiful fabric. Uh, it's so lovely. And just making it into a gathered skirt, which is something that I knew that I will wear all of the time, was perfect. You know, I know that you can find these fancy fabrics and you think you have to make something really fancy and really beautiful and sometimes you can just make what you love and you know because you know that you're going to wear it all of the time and so this was fantastic to just pair with a white t-shirt and so easy. And so I made that striped gathered skirt for the summer so I needed to make its equivalent for the winter so I pulled out my straight skirt pattern finally after how many years and I made myself a brand new straight skirt out of this beautiful cotton velvet with a self spot on it. Love the skirt. Um, wore it last winter and it was fantastic. You can wear it with just like a lovely navy sweater or a beautiful cream sweater with a bit of texture I think. Um, and a hot pink scarf to really brighten it up. Uh, I did this with a grey grain ribbon facing all the way around which was really cool and then in the hem did a contrast. I did a like a satin binding for the hem. Again, I didn't make the skirt in any sort of rush. I made it over a couple of weekends, and so I wanted to finish it off really properly, and so I used bias binding to finish the seams inside. 
Uh, and that's why I put like the other little details of the, of the bias binding for the hem um, and then hand stitched it and then the grow grain ribbon around the top because I just think that it makes it feel a little bit more professional, a little bit, um, a little bit special to wear. So again that was a lovely little favourite make of mine. Um, which only came into my wardrobe last year, but is something that I've wore so much and I cannot wait again to wear when it gets a little bit cooler. So one of my other brothers was having a little wedding, very little wedding on the quiet end of last year. Uh, and so I had like a week to make a dress, maybe two weeks, I'm not sure, but knowing me, I left it to the last minute. So I had like one day to dra quickly draft a pattern. I had an idea of what I wanted to make. Um, and so I quickly like, got out another dress, sort of traced around it, changed the neckline, um, changed a whole bunch of things on the dress that I already had, and made this new pattern, and then I made, quickly made a twirl, it had lots of tweaks that I needed to make, and then the day before the wedding I finally cut it out of the real fabric, and yeah, stayed up till like 3 o'clock in the morning making this dress. But, this is a dress that I freaking love. It is just, it's just so me. Even though it's not on the waist, even though it is a drop waist, it's just beautiful. It's a linen cotton fabric, um, which is pink. It's just the most beautiful shade of pink with a little um, white fleck through it sort of thing. I just did a gathered skirt here at the bottom and I made it quite short because when you're really short like me, I think for the proportions, the skirt part of a drop waist dress should be quite short. Um, it just looks a bit more balanced, I find. Uh, yeah, so I did princess line seams through there. The unfortunate thing is that they do pucker through here. I just could not get the right shape um, and size through there, which is pretty unfortunate, but it's okay. And then I did a little straight neckline, and I wanted those like straps that look like tabs. You know, like those paper dolls um, that you'd have that have like the tabs that fold to the back. Moschino did like a whole collection on them and I thought that was like so cool. So that's what I wanted with this dress was to look like it had the little tabs at the back that was holding the dress on. Uh, and then I wanted actually the neckline to sit up quite high. Um, no, sorry, the back neckline to sit up quite high because I know sometimes, well, a lot of my dresses all have like a low back on them, but on this one I was like, oh, I think it would look really cool if the neckline, the back neckline sits up quite high and the low neckline sits just here, just under the, um, just under the collarbone there and then it's just all fully lined with a cotton white foil. This was just a really fantastic make that I made last year. I do have to say the things that I made uh, in 2019 summer have got to be some of my favourite things I've made ever. I think I just really hit it with my style and fabrics and that. Um. So the other thing I made, and this one is something that I did put a lot of time into, I think I started this like Easter 2019 and then finally finished it, and then finally finished it in like December 2019, but it was this beautiful little um, two piece set. So this is the top of it, and then I made a little skirt. Unfortunately I didn't really have enough fabric to make a dress. So my genius best friend and roommate said, why don't you just make it into a two piece? So that's what I did. Uh, so it's got a little ruffle here along the neckline, which is super cute, little shoestring straps. And then at the back, it's got a shirt back. So I really love that this has got like a little bit of a sweetheart shape. I find it really flattering. Really, really love that style. This was all copied from a dress that I already own. And then for the bottom, I just did really easy gathered skirt on a waistband with invisible zip at the back. Yeah, super easy. But I love it because I can wear this just with a white t-shirt. Um, you can really see that my white t-shirt in my wardrobe gets a lot of work. <laughs> so yeah, I just wear that with a white t-shirt and it looks really cool too. You don't want to look so uh, matchy matchy. Summer, summer, matchy matchy. But for summer parties, Christmas parties, this was my go-to. Loved it. It was fantastic. And talking of Christmas parties, I have my annual Christmas party uh, with my roommates. And so being, it was our last Christmas party uh, at the place we were living down in Brisbane. So had to bring the A game and make my own dress. The one thing I knew about the dress that I wanted to make for my Christmas party was that it had to be pink and wanted to be like my Ruby Vale Road pink because that's just my classic. Saw this, it was from Lincraft, I think it was like $15 a meter and I just went that's it, I have to get that fabric and um, I woke up the next morning and the fabric was sitting on the floor of my bedroom and I went, oh my goodness, did I vomit last night? What is that? And I, and, uh, and I thought, 
you just need to get straight into making this dress because otherwise you're going to be second guessing that fabric that you bought. So I got straight into it and for this I made it over a couple of weeks so I got started, I cut it out and then like the week after I did all of the darts uh, and then I came home for a weekend which was great so then I had the bodice all sewn together and then mum could fit it for me so um, while I was at home I put my invisible zipper in and make sure it all fitted perfect. I wanted this dress to be scandalously short so that is exactly what it was it was probably too short did leave a bit of a hem in there though so I can lengthen it um, when I feel not quite so reckless the straps I'd seen lots of like these diamantes and rhinestones getting around on net porter so I was like I had to jump jump have to jump onto that bandwagon and what's the point of doing two straps when you can have four straps when you are wearing you know beautiful crystals and rhinestones so that's what I did and this dress was fully lined with this um, lining in the skirt and the bodice and when we get out of isolation this is the dress I think I will be wearing because like I just need to make the most out of how many times I can wear this dress while I fit it and while I feel confident wearing it this short you know <laughs> have to be self-aware that I'm probably not gonna feel like this all of my life <laughs> So the last thing I made in 2019, it was my dad's 70th birthday and I knew I wanted to make something really special and beautiful to wear to it and I had this incredible heavyweight uh, cream linen. Unfortunately, the idea I had in my head just did not work. I worked on it for like a whole week and I think sometimes with sewing you have to know when something's just not working, when you just haven't got the right shape or the right fit uh, and it's really sad because you put so much time into it and anyway. So have to make do with what you have done and what is working. So the bodice of this dress didn't end up existing, unfortunately. But what I did want was a beautiful circle skirt. Uh, so that's what I did with the skirt that I had cut out. I just put a piece of elastic around the top of it uh, and made a belt. I just ripped the fabric um, of the linen and made a really cool just frayed out belt, which I think looked really nice just as the texture. It was a beautiful, beautiful skirt because the fabric is such beautiful quality. And then 2020 has started and I'm at home and I'm making sewing tutorials. Sewing tutorials I do really love making uh, and I do love, you know, putting myself back into the shoes of what it was like when I first learnt to sew and what are the things that people need to learn and know and... So if you haven't seen any of my sewing tutorials, what I have made have been this, um, it's just been this little elastic waist skirt so it was really easy it's just a rectangle and you sew a piece of elastic around the top of it this is really cool fabric my boss had given me this this has already had like a self pleat in it um but yeah i just couldn't wait to make this into a skirt but i was like i have to do a tutorial because it's so easy um and yeah i love this skirt because it's mid length it's really lightweight it's elastic it's so comfortable and again you can wear this with a black singlet black t-shirt super easy um for those days you don't feel like getting too dressed up but it's nice and bright so it brightens up your day. I had been on Instagram and seen a girl wearing this really gorgeous dress and I thought oh my goodness that's actually very easy to make and it is very easy to also draft your own pattern. Um, so that's when I made this really bright blue uh, linen dress which has got the tie straps up the top there and a v-neck. It's just cool. I really want to get into more v-neck. I really do love it. And then I did it in two gathered tiers for the skirt. So it's like a whole maxi dress. But yeah, this is really cool. This is very fun. And the last one then is this beautiful linen wrap skirt. This has got to be one of my favourite things that I've made and I probably will make more of. Uh, I was inspired for this idea from a skirt that I had seen on Reformation. Uh, I think they might have done theirs a bit more like flary, a bit more A-line. But just love it and it's a midi again so it just sits at a really nice length. I think you need to vary it up a little bit more um, to have things below the knee and above the knee building that wardrobe again as I was talking about uh, and this has got just a little tie at the waist which I just do as a knot, I don't do as a like, big bow, I don't like too many bows. And the other thing I love is that it's got a nice wide waistband and I positioned my little hooks and bars in quite close and tight so the skirt really sits quite tight which I think is nice because when you feel like something like this which has got quite a bit of fabric because it is obviously a wrap 
I think that you need to feel really fitted in it, otherwise you can feel like you're being swamped. So that's everything for part two of all the things I've made. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'm excited to, of course, continue making and hopefully reaching out a little bit more, but I do have my particular styles that I love and putting that thought into buying the fabrics and knowing what you love to make and knowing what suits you really starts to build a wardrobe that you can really love and really rely on. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this and feel inspired as well to get making and I know I had a lot of little rants and tangents and all sorts of things through this video but I really do love sharing my experiences with sewing and with fashion and all of those things so please if you have ever have any questions or comments leave me a comment and I'm always excited to share and join in and hopefully start to build our little Ruby Vale Road into a really good uh, group and like-minded people who are all on their adventures sewing and creating and building their skills and making things that they love. So thank you so much and best wishes on all your sewing adventures. Until the next video, bye bye!